goodness. Oh no. Oh. Oh, Rio, what's the matter? Oh, hi, Michelle. Oh my gosh. My sink is clogged. I don't know why. I, I don't know how this could have happened. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Rio. Well, I'm not a plumber, but I am a wastewater treatment operator, so I might be able to help. Really? That would be awesome. Oh, it would be so great if you could help, Michelle. Um, but uh, actually, you know what, Michelle? I don't really know what a wastewater treatment operator is or what a wastewater treatment plant is. Could you tell me a bit more about what you do? I'd be happy to. Um, so a wastewater treatment operator treats the wastewater that comes from your house. So that's anything that goes down your sinks or your toilets. And there's a lot of gross stuff in that water. It has to go through the pipes in your house and then it has to go out into the street into even larger pipes called the collection system. Once that water is pushed through the collection system, it arrives at our wastewater treatment plant. There we have to take out the gross stuff. So that can be like big things like rocks or sticks or even a lot of things that don't belong. And we use screens to take out that stuff. Great. Um, there's also bacteria in the water. So we use this bacteria to help break down the stuff that's in the wastewater, like your poo. Mm -hmm. But in order to get these bacteria to do their job, we have to feed them. And they like to eat the nutrients in the water, including the poop, and they like oxygen, just like us. They, gotta, they have to breathe, right? So. What we do is we pump a lot of oxygen into the water and we make it so that it's a really nice environment for them to live and to grow. And they can then eat more and more of the yucky stuff out of the wastewater, like the organics. It's really important that we get those out. So next, we'll send the wastewater to these big tanks called clarifiers. So in these clarifiers, we separate the wastewater. Um, any of the waste that's in the water would settle to the bottom where the clean water or almost clean water would rise to the top and get sent out to our next process. In that next process, what we do is we add a little bit of chlorine because there might still be some bacteria and some viruses in the water and we want to get those out before we send it back out to the natural waterways. Um, so the chlorine's a little bit like your swimming pool, uh, but it's not as much chlorine because we have to take this chlorine back out of the wastewater um, before, or back out of the water before it leaves. And that's so that it doesn't hurt the plants and the fish out in the natural waterways. So it's very important for a wastewater treatment operator to do their jobs at the plant to make sure that all of the processes go the right way so that we don't harm any fish or plants out in, or people out in the natural waterways and we clean that, that wastewater to make it clean. <laughs> wow, that's amazing, Michelle. Oh my gosh, I had no idea that so much happened to my water after it went down my drain. And your job sounds so important, helping to keep our water clean and our environment clean. Thanks for explaining that. But Michelle, what exactly does that have to do with the clog in my sink right now? Well, Rio, do you remember how I told you how some of these things don't belong going down the drain? Yeah. Well, some of these things commonly are like Q-tips. So that's something we use in the bathroom I a lot. Yeah, I have those in my bathroom. Uh, dental floss, right? And even paper towel shouldn't go down the drain because it can clog up a drain or it can clog up a toilet, right? It can also clog up our collection system on the way down. Um, would you mind doing a little experiment with me? I'd love to. Okay. So for our experiment, we're going to fill three of these jars, or each one of these jars, with some toilet paper, some flushable wipes, and 
with these baby wipes. So we're gonna see which ones break down and how easily. So for the first one, put in a little bit of toilet paper. And we'll close it up. And for the next one, one of our flushable wipes. Last one, one of our baby wipes. Okay, so the goal of this experiment is to see just how easily or maybe not so easily things break down. So we're gonna shake up the jars, to kind of speed things along and just kind of simulate what it would be like if these things went down your toilet or down your drains. Shake up our first two, which is your toilet paper and your flushable wipe. So both of these things are supposedly supposed to go down the drain. Look what happens to the toilet paper. It is all broken up. None of it is still together. Look at the flushable wipe. Not the same. This should definitely not be going down your drain. Now, last but not least, we're gonna shake up our Pampers wipe. And just as they don't claim this should go down the drain, it definitely shouldn't go down the drain. Just as expected, it's exactly the same. So this stuff, what actually happens to it if it does make it down your drain and your toilets and doesn't clog them, it actually gets stuck in our collection system in pipes and pumps. And it will build up to big amounts. They clog up our collection system and they ruin pumps and they cost a lot of money to fix. What's even worse is that they cause backups. So the wastewater comes back through the system and up into your house and then you have poop in your house. Yuck. That is gross. That is gross. So we definitely don't want that. No. So it's important that we only flush the three P's. The Do you know what the three P's, P's are? What are the three P's? The three P's are pee, poop, and toilet paper. <laughs> so, do you think anything might have made it down your drain that didn't belong there? Michelle, I've learned so much today and I think you're right. I think that could be part of my problem. So I'm going to make sure that I fix this and I'm not going to flush any of those things or put them down the drain anymore. Good job, Rio. Thanks, Michelle.